game. Uh, there we go. Uh, where we are in the middle of seducing the spirit. Um, <laughs> the art is so funky. Look at her. Look at her. I love her. Yep, the Monado can hurt chatbot. <clears throat> well, I hate to break it to you, but tonight's story isn't scary, it's a romance. Too late now, though. I was selected, and I'm, so I'm going to tell my story. I call... The Prisoner's Kiss. You notice the Huntress and the Wraith are both sharing a giant tub of popcorn. Nobody offered you popcorn. It was a dark summer's night. Warm rain seeped from the sky like the blood from an old wound. Detective Hoda, a celebrated investigator and renowned hostage negotiator, was called the was called to the scene of a strange occurrence unlike anything she had ever seen before. When she arrived, the scene was chaotic. Crowds had begun to gather. A dozen other officers were doing everything they could to keep curious onlookers away. How could anyone resist wanting to know more? For there, in the middle of a busy market, had appeared a giant box. Strange, alien in its appearance, and massive inside. No one knew how it got there. Was it delivered? Built on site? In such a busy area? How could something like this just appear? A mystery, as if it was conjured by magic. This was no illusion. The box was very real, and someone was trapped inside. Spirit pauses her story to look from face to face of each audience member. She has no expression, but you'll feel her vibrating with energy. She's in her element. She's so pretty. I love her. Help me! Someone cried inside the box. It was a man, terrified, trapped, imprisoned. His voice was trembling. And now, as if it was, if every detective in the city was there, looking this strange structure up and down, inspecting it on every side, it didn't make sense. There were no doors, no windows, no fasteners or seams. It was completely solid, and much too heavy to move by hand. Solid, that is. Except for a small slit. Just enough to see the bloodshot eyes of the prisoner trapped inside. I don't know what happened. I woke up and I was here. And here I was. I'm so scared. Please help me, cried the man, as if pleading for his life. No stranger to tense situations, Detective Hada confirmed the man. Comforted the man. She used her training to calm him and buy time for the other investigators. However, Time did not bring clarity, only anxiety, as the night dragged on with no progress, opening the box. As the night grew longer, the steeping rain puddled on the ground. The man inside grew more desperate, more sad and lonely, more pathetic and in need of help. But Detective Hotto was no help at all. Powerless to save him, guilt began to weigh on her, like it had never had before. Don't let me die in here, the man begged. Don't let me die alone. Stay calm, instructed Detective Hada. You're not alone. I'm here. Hell, half the town is here. We're all in this together. We won't let you be, and we won't let this be the end of your story. Looking through the narrowest of passageways, Detective Hada watched her own reflection in the tear-filled eyes of the stranger. Strange, sad prisoner. Together, they both wept in the silence of the hopelessness of the moment. Promise, asked the man. Promise that I'm not alone. Yes, she promised. I do. A simple pledge. She felt an instant connection like she had never felt before. Not to her family, not to her friends, not to any of the other hostages she had worked so hard to free before. And so, when the man's eyes closed and backed away, it didn't scare Detective Hotto, for she knew he would return, and he did. Pressing his lips to the narrow slit in the horrible puzzle box, repeating his question again, steam flowing from his mouth as he asked, Promise. Promise I'm not alone. Yes, you promise. I do. And press her palms against the cold outside of the box. Without truly knowing why, Detective Hada leaned forward and placed her own lips upon the opening, letting her breath keep into the strange structure 
allowing her warm lips to fall on this man's. It was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in the brief contact the beating of her heart. Started reading chat. Um, he, I'm curious, what evidence did you find from the ghost? EMF 5 dealt. Uh, definitely freezing temp, spirit box, and, uh, and, and dots. That, that's the three pieces of admin evidence. Um, it was a gentle kiss, a moment of compassion. She could feel in the brief contact beating of her heart, pulsing blood through every inch of her body, matching beat for beat in, so in this soft touch. Thank you, said the man, no trace of fear remaining in his voice. And he backed away into the darkness, disappearing into a single moment of eerie calmness. Get back, yelled an officer, suddenly thrusting himself between Detective Hata and the box, breaking a silence that would soon be filled by a cacophony of whirling gears and cricking latches, a symphony of mechanical activity happening all at once. Something had triggered, as if an unseen lever pulled and the side of the giant box began to slide open. Detective Hata gripped her flashlight tightly and pushed forward into the foggy interior of the giant box. Her feet splashed in the puddle of rainwater, her heart racing. She swept her head as she swept her light from side to side. And that's when her eyes landed on the man, or at least landed on what should have been him. There, in the corner of the box, was a pile of pieces, like parts of a doll, almost pulled apart. Or perhaps that's just how Detective Hada had to think of him in that moment to survive. A collection of segments, limbs, pieces, disconnected from one another, clearly, cleanly severed and placed into a neat little pile. And on top of that pile, a cold, a head, cold, pale, eyes open, lips an icy blue. Spirit stares at the fire, her own expression lifeless, her lips blue, tears fall from her chin and soak into the sand at her feet. You're blown away by the story, and it's safe to say you're not alone. Everyone else is looking into the fire up at the sky, anywhere but its spirit. It was you who chose her. You who initiated this harrowing tale. So sad, so creepy, so sensual. You really into great detail when it came to describing that kiss. Too much detail. No one, now no one is sure how to act. Dwight and, Dwight and Claudette are staring daggers at you. You have to do something. The game was supposed to be a light-hearted romp. Please, I said do something. Um, um... She's crying. I'm gonna hug her. I... <laughs> Why is she so sad? I feel so bad. This seems so personal. She's severed. Maybe it's about her. You stand up, and without saying anything, approach Spirit, reaching her arms around her for a hug. Her robe, hovering in the air, begins to wrap itself around you, squeeze you into her. Kind of like being hugged back, but also like being tied up. It's certainly not what you expected. Instinctually, you pull yourself away, but it's an awkward movement, and you nearly fall over into the fire. Spirit says nothing and floats away without so much as a goodbye. You, meanwhile, realize everybody just watched this truly strained interaction from the corners of their eyes. On that note, everyone decides it's time to break up and split and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. This is nice. A true moment of peace and tranquility that lasts for a whole seven seconds before Trickster shows up and he's blaring his latest song. Trickster is very pretty. <laughs> hey baby, you look lonely. Mind if I join you? No. He doesn't wait for an answer. I know you've been hearing from these guppies all day, but I want you to hear something from a big fish like me. Something special. Those in charge of this island don't want you to hear. 
I'm the ultimate catch on this island. The only lobster in the ocean of sardines. You're really not, though. No one can give you what I can. Great. Delicious. Thanks. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves. You're a bit confused about what to make of his, of his cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just yet. Beard approaches you. You know, I was watching you while I told my story. I could tell it was having an effect on you. Really? Told the most pressing thing, and you're like, yeah, it had an effect, ma'am. This fog that follows me around, I could feel you breathing heavily, taking me in. You and I are both absolutely flabbergasted by that piece of information. Legit, you learn something new every day. Even when you're a god, I mean, <laughs> a narrator. You're doing it again, right now. You need to calm down. Come to the hot tub with me. Dipping in hot tubs with the spirit, you've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you should follow her. An offer like that, don't forget our little talk. You and your story feller friends slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean in the pool, you're also pretty sure that your killer companion could handle it. Uh, I just want to be totally clear. Even though that story had some similarities to my life, it was not about me in any way, shape, or form. Not symbolically, not metaphorically, not any other, not other, not any otherically. I believe you completely. Sure, you were cut into pieces in your life, and that was the person out of the story. A perfectly normal coincidence. Sure, you're on this island, trapped, one say, in a most puzzling place. Also a completely regular coincidence. Sure, his lips are blue, your lips are blue. <laughs> really? You call this blue? Searching for answers, hoping to find... Revenge. Hmm, okay, so the similes, similarities stop there, I guess. Coincidences. Sorry, a coincidence. Hit it through your head, whoever you are. Memory blood runs through my veins, or, well, maybe it has congealed by now? I don't need to sweat the details. Regardless, I am a descendant of noble warriors. Thousands of years of training with bladed weapons preceded my entrance into this world. You know how many swords that is? A lot. You've gotta figure You've gotta figure that with many sharp edges, a person is bound to get disconnected from a body part here and there. Truth is, I typically wouldn't share this, so don't go blabbing about it. Jump that story. Like watching a movie in my sleep when I was a little girl. Years before my father sunk his blade into my skin. I've never been able to shake it. That's a very adult story for a child to dream. Do you believe me? I mean... Sure. I know we just met, but yes, I do believe you. The way you told that story, we really came from someplace deep. Fool! Who taught you to trust a shit stranger? You're gonna get hurt if you don't learn to take better care of yourself. You've got me wondering. Do I believe you if you believe her or not? If I know everything, because trust me, I know everything. Don't I already know the answer to my question about if I believe your answer to Spirit's question? Whoa. Ocean air got me tripping. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract us, but what's important is that a certain corpse cutie floating on a cloud of magical mist might still be waiting for you to say the right thing and free her from her bubble box. You believe that she is in the... Damn it, you got me going again. Unfortunately, before you can follow this conundrum of what will surely be a mind-numbing cycle of new questions, you find a certain to someone standing before you with a fresh towel ready to dry you off. Sorry, kids. But it's time for bed. I might be the youngest one here, but I'm no kid. I do, however, love being wrapped in a clean, fresh towel. My mother used to help me wash my hair when I was young. She'd comb out all the tangles and tie a ribbon around it before sending me on my way. I miss her. Why do you- Stop crying! I'm so guilty when you cry.
water. You watch as Spirit stares off in the distance, her hand gripping the tight fish. She doesn't notice you're watching her at first. When she catches you looking, she turns away, roughly grabs the towel from Dwight, and then pushes him and Claude out of sight from as she floats off. You head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting on this chilly night. Looking into the crackling embers, you think about Spirit's story about the prisoner in the puzzle box. You manage to escape this place. Will you leave with your own life? Or has it already been taken from you and it's just a matter of time until you make a gruesome discovery? Before you can dwell too much on the fate, Claudette and Dwight arrive. They now familiar creepy smile stretching from ear to ear. It's a bit menacing to see a smile like that like that lit by firelight. We must apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest, but we're going to make you comfortable or die trying. They hand you a pillow and blanket and welcome you to snuggle by the fire. I, what is happening in this game? Why, why was there like a bloody murder background? Perhaps some music will put you at ease. Just try to keep the volume to a minimum. Our other guests aren't the types you'll want to rob of their beauty sleep. Re ready? I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Okay. Ready. Away we go. You relax and look into the fire. Radio begins to fuzz and flicker. You examine it and decide you might adjust the dial and fix it. Uh, uh, let's see what's on this station. No, I don't like that one. No matter how many times you listen to, no matter how many things you listen to, you still can't sleep. You decide to ask one of the killers to spend a little more time with you until you're sleepier. Would you like to summon that? Who would you like to summon at your side to lay with you by the fire? Um, is that even a question? Spirit, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Spirit tells you her secret for falling asleep when she's feeling restless. 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 I can read. I promise. I like to listen to flute music, dab on some essential oils, and steam my pores. Really? What? Even the dead like to relax. I don't really have any of those things around. Oh, a comb! Spirit reaches out and presents you with a unique item. It's a small comb, carved from bamboo. Guess you could hold on to this. It was a gift from my mother. I want it back, though. If you lose it, well... You'll get your revenge on me? It's the last thing I do. Finally start to feel sleepy, except maybe it isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. Try to keep your eyes open, but you can't. Darkness overtakes you. A dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't be as spooky, but by now, you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. The human body is made of 60% water. Did you know that? Of course you did. Everyone knows that. Even a music video game protagonist. And guess what? Drink as much as you'd like. You'll never get to 100%, you hear me? Don't think I don't see what you're up to. You awake suddenly to see someone looming over you. Trapper sitting beside you, sketching a portrait. Oh, you're awake. I saw you a spirit right before bedtime. You should know, they're not what they seem, not like me, who is obviously completely honest and trustworthy. Man, you seem so mad. I was outside, uh, checking to make sure you weren't sleeping near one of my... Actually, never mind. Just be careful where you sit. But since I'm here, I'd like to share two things with you. One, I don't take rejection. Well... Two, 
And the first thing is very important to remember. Are you drawing me? Sharper is an answer. You weren't drawing thing clongs radiating out of me, were you? Still, nothing from the trapper. Look, I'm not an easy guy to get along with, but I'm a super easy guy to spend time with. That will make sense if you choose to spend time with me tomorrow. The rest of the scum live like rats. They wouldn't know a good time if it bit them in the ass. I mean that literally. Point is, if you select me, you're in a day for luxury, extravagance, and fun. Yes, I said fun. And if I don't pick you, remember what I said earlier. Or it might be the last thing you ever forget. But hey, you look tired. Get some rest, sleep. Maybe even sleep well if you can. Just try not to roll over at about 15 feet to your left. Thanks, Trapper. Appreciate it. Ah, uh, yes. I think you're... <laughs> Well, what I'm trying to sleep with that killer. I don't know what you expect from me, chat. I want to smooch that ghost lady serial killer, okay? I'm gonna smooch the heck out of her. Who's gonna stop me? Probably her when she stabs me. Finally alone, for real this time, maybe. You drift off to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Sleeping. Oh, we're sleeping. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confession rooms hey, where all the... Hey, there are chatbots in this server. Chatbot, just, just cover your ears. Don't worry about it. Wait a second. Where are we? This isn't... Oh, jeez, it is. It's one of those reality show confessional rooms. Where all the contestants talk directly to the camera. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat all organic, diet of raw deer, him, bear, and human, and I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something out of this newcomer makes me think I might be missing out on a huge part of this thing called life. There's always time to turn things around. Like that one time I spent a day and a night searching for food in vain. Only to return my cabin spent and starving to find out a family of squirrels nesting in my chimney. They were delicious. Look, I'm always full of rage. The, the key to knowing how to control your rage is so you can use it. I'm a master of self-control. And right now I'm using all my self-control I, I can muster because today was a disaster. Let's just say I didn't love it. <laughs> That was funny. Laugh. I said laugh, damn it. Anyway, I'm planning to kill this idiot. Don't tell them no. I'm gonna lead them on a little bit more. We'll make that much better for me when they're screaming. I'm not really sure how I feel about tea. On one hand, everyone I ever cared about has met an awful fate. But it's probably a good thing for tea if they just keep ignoring me. On the other hand, there's something about that about them that maybe could work out for my plan or for me. I know that everyone thinks of me as a beautiful, cold-blooded monster. I can't help it. Speculation just isn't my thing. I don't choose to be cold. This cute hat and robe, okay, those are a choice. Sure. If someone were to come around and capture my heart, at least that beats being stabbed in it. Besides, I'm gonna get my bloody revenge on society that used me and throw me away. Maybe it couldn't hurt to have a little help. Okay.